Hey folks, somebody call the doctor. I'm burning up with stereo fever. Yep, I went to the thrift store again and I walked back with a pretty cool stereo. This Panasonic stereo from about 1993. The whole set was there. Power cord, speakers, everything except the antenna. So I'm using my own crappy one there as you can see. And um, it's in the space where my Sylvania stereo was just because, well, I have a lot more space on the shelf now, which is really cool. Um, so this is a Panasonic full sound system that you would have bought in the 90s. There were a lot of stereos like this I remember back then. I remember having one myself. I don't think it was a Panasonic. I think it was a Sharp stereo at the time. But uh, this one's also very good. It was absolutely filthy when I got it home from the store, but I managed to clean it up a lot. I didn't even have to vacuum the uh, speaker grills there. They actually look pretty okay as they are. So, what did you get out of an inexpensive all-in-one stereo system about 29 years ago? Well, this model, uh, some of these came with a record player on top. This one does not. Uh, this one came with a CD player instead, which I guess in 1993 was a lot more relevant because vinyl was really falling out of favor in the early to mid-90s. And the only people that really used it were club, club DJs, so you'd buy the one with the record player in it for your grandma or your dad or mom or whatever back in 1993, I guess. So this comes with a digital tuner, which has very good reception and is very selective and sounds excellent. You got the amplifier portion itself, which you know has all your function switches, your power on and off. Uh, you get a eighth inch headphone jack or 3.5 millimeter. You get bass, treble, and balance controls, which is nice. Uh, believe it or not, some cheap systems didn't have those. They just had a tone control, which is a little bit lame. Uh, your functions are tape, CD, tuner, and aux. And the aux makes this stereo really usable these days. Get your nice volume control there. Uh, the, here's your switch to go from normal to high speed dubbing or from um, or from type 1 to type 2 tape. So this thing actually supports chrome tape bias. Bias position is what BP stands for there. So that's actually really nice for a stereo like this. Speaking of which, here are the dual cassette decks. These needed a lot of cleanup, but I got them looking really nice inside. Uh, they both work, uh, so I cleaned them, I cleaned the pinch rollers, just cleaned them out with Q-tips. And uh, I also adjusted the azimuth of both decks, because when I played tapes, it sounded the treble just sounded off. You'd press play, the treble would be fine for a while, then it would sort of fade out and get the, the treble itself would warble. So I adjusted the azimuth, and that seemed to fix that problem. And I also got the, and it also has a mash. CD player, so that's nothing special. It's just a uh, a regular CD player, but boy, does it sound good. It has a good deck in it. So when I saw this at the thrift store, it looked cheap to me. So when I found the power cord, I thought, let's test it out. So I plugged it in, tested all, of, tested it for functionality. The tuner seemed to function. Uh, the cassette decks moved. I could grab onto the spindle and it would work. Uh, it would. It had some torque, you know. Uh, CD player ejected. Uh, I didn't actually get to test. I tested the CD player in the store too, and it did read a CD. So every function seemed to work. When I brought it home, I, I was right. Everything did work. The speakers worked. Every everything is good. It just needed a massive cleaning because it was disgusting. This is the model SA D one hundred two, and it's quite. It's quite a nice stereo. It, it, it's kind of like the Sylvania in that it sounds far better than it really should for as cheap as it is. And stuff, stuff like this really kind of shined on in the 90s and faded out in the 2000s once um, mini bookshelf systems kind of died off and iPod docks came in. That's when this sort of stereo sort of died. It, it got smaller and then it faded away. So now let's take a look at the back of the system. Here's what the back of the Panasonic stereo looks like. There's remnants in that hole there of some of the dirt that I had to clean out. You can see how dusty and horrible that is. I'm talking about the hole right there. Crusty. Uh, so here's the back of the stereo. It's rather unremarkable, I guess. Uh, looks like here is the FM antenna connector. In fact, we can confirm that. 
yep, FM antenna, 75 ohm. So I have a uh, I have a little crappy antenna I can hook up to that. Here you have your aux input, which of course will allow you to modernize the stereo and gives it a lot more potential. Uh, and you have your speaker outputs. Now it looks like it takes four to eight ohms, and the speakers are rated for what? Speakers are rated for four ohms, so yeah, there you have it. It matches the amplifier pretty much perfectly. And the nice thing about the stereo is it takes a standard polarized figure of eight uh, plug. So it's very easy to find a cable for this particular stereo if you happen to come across it. Here's the nameplate. The Panasonic model SAD-102 compact audio system by Matsushita or Matsusta. Uh, Electric Industrial Company Limited, made in Singapore. So this was not Chinese made. How about that? And as you can see here, it was made in August of 1993. So it is just about 30 years old. In 2023, this will be 30 years old. It's 29 years old as of the filming of this video, and it still works great. So well done, Panasonic. So it uses four ohm speakers, which seem to match the amplifier really well. Uh, I didn't open this to take a look at it just because it requires a long screwdriver and the process looked a little involved and nothing's broken. So I don't really want to mess with it yet. So if this thing ever needs repair, I'm sure we'll see the inside of it then. For now, let's give a demonstration. Start with the radio. Uh, All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. I appreciate this. And finally, 70 minutes in, it's time to vote. People form a long line. Now, this thing did not, I could not find the antenna that came with this thing. It was just, it probably was just a, like a square plastic antenna. So I'm using this really crappy AM loop antenna from a, some Pioneer thing that I had in the other room. And, uh, it's 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 doing an okay job. It's not great. I really need to get a decent antenna for this thing. But even so, you can see it's picking up stations like really easily. Were you expecting that? Look how selective this tuner is. Maybe a hot. There's uncertainty at quarterback. There are 70 catches and way to put two different sports stations right next to each other. It's picking it up no problem. Maybe. Very selective tuner. I'm very impressed with it. If. It almost picks up the news station. So that's kind of impressive. I'm Karen. Five. Picks up a ton of FM stations. The tuner in this thing is absolutely stellar. Very selective and sounds very good. Uh, the only thing that needs improvement is I just need to get a better antenna than that AM loop stick coil. That's really not the proper antenna for FM. So I'll find something and replace that eventually. So let's try AM. Now, as you recall, when I had the Sylvania stereo in this particular spot, AM reception was basically just a bunch of tapping noises and interference. Well, with that stereo, I found, since I moved it to its new spot, it can actually sort of pick up AM. And it's pretty wideband. It sounds pretty good. This one, we'll see how it does in the same spot. Hey, we're picking up stations. Sort of got something there. One thing this thing can do is tune really fast. Look at this. The digital tuning on this is nice and quick.
barely picking up 1060, which is our news station. Or misinformed, and whatever it is. Hey, look at that. We picked up a station strong. Under oath, that's not what happened. They didn't show that, and it goes right to what you're saying about the whole thing being completely theater. And that saw a witness heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another who was talk was messing around. <laughs> are you guys? Are you waiting yeah. to all REO speed wagon on that? That is perfect. Well <laughs> done, dude. <laughs> okay, but Trump, Trump's the only one that cannot, you know. What in the world is going on here? Such as things they want to, they want to arrest him and 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 indict him and and impeach him for it. You know, that's why that's why uh, you're allowed to have legal challenges. Yeah. You know, that's why the president has lawyers and advisors that he can discuss tactics and and and, and uh, uh, routes to go about things. And and he's allowed to discuss these things. This him discussing it is not illegal and is not indictable. Uh, Merrick Garland, you know, somebody needs to tell Merrick Garland that also. Okay. And and then. You know, you're, you're allowed to mount legal challenges, whatever they are, if you think there's a legal issue and you put it out there, it's up to the courts to decide whether or not that is going to fly or not. Right. You can't freaking charge somebody and arrest them and indict them because they, they mounted a legal challenge. You jack it. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. No. I, I know. And people are voting badly, and this is the kind of thing that happens, Scott, and I appreciate your your passion and uh, your contribution to the conversation. I really, truly really do. All right. Hey. Thanks, buddy. All right. 302 Do you have that uh, the Trump outtakes? I mean, we could jump into that. We'll talk more about the recession and, and what are you doing to prepare for, how to prepare for that, but oh my God. No, it's just AM Talk Radio. Right, and before you sign this agreement, and so many people are actually picking up AM stations, stations really well. The people. This is doing a lot better than the Sylvania stereo was. Click, 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 click. And did they actually explain every page you that it's like... Or you were going to release you. Jimmy G is saying okay because if somebody here we go, that's that a strong station. Million. If I get released, I'm probably making six or seven million. So he's okay. Also visited Notre Dame University, and there's a strong station too. There, Look at that. He just, um, made that decision that he was. He knew that's what he was supposed to do, and that's what God wanted him to do, so... Um, this one says a lot less hash in it, too, a lot less interference. arrived in Malti. With her family. It's like, what, what are we supposed to do with, like, three days extra to get out of this place? And there were no rental cars. Everybody was trying to get rental cars. It got so nasty, I was walking out, and I was like, I just want to get out of here. Wow, music on AM, that's rare for here. And there you go, more music on AM. Cool. Barely picking that up. But there you go, that's the tuner. The AM tuner in this is far better than the one in the Sylvania. The Sylvania one sounds good, but it's not very, the reception's not very good. Whereas this, the FM and AM tuner, are absolutely stellar. All right, tape decks. I don't know how well you can see in there, but I cleaned them out pretty well. There's really no dirt left in there to speak of. The pinch rollers were absolutely disgusting. And as I explained earlier, I had to adjust the azimuth. And I wanted to show you how good I managed to make this thing sound.
get ready to hear the tapes on the other deck. There you go. I managed to make both tape decks sound really good on playback. Now we're going to have to try recording later and see how my adjustments made that happen. So we'll have to see how well this thing records. Hopefully my adjustments didn't screw that up at all because they were way off um, when I initially got this thing. But hey, they both sound great now. Nice and clear. No warble. Nothing. They sound fantastic. As you can see there, this is a full auto-stop deck, unlike the Sylvania. Uh, this thing will auto-stop for play, record, rewind, fast-forward, everything. Which I think is better, because that means that uh, there's less of a chance that it will eat a tape. So, good job, Panasonic. I bid you greetings from the future, much like the last video where we had copyright problems. And I just wanted to help a, a buddy of mine's music get more exposed, but uh, ran into copyright issues with YouTube, so I guess that's not happening. So instead, let's demonstrate the CD player with uh, some GarageBand music. So it's your classic early 90s CD player. It's got MASH written on it like a lot of stereos did, which stands for Multi-Stage Noise Shaping. Ooh, fancy. It does have some decent features. It has repeat program recall edit pause so it can only repeat it can only repeat the whole CD it cannot repeat one song like so many CD players used to be able to at the time so it's kinda halfway there on the repeat feature I, I typically don't program CD players anymore so I'd assume that that works like you'd expect you could you pick a track list and you let it go you know um, but I haven't tested yet as to whether this can play CDRs and uh, thanks to the copyright issues I'm having with YouTube, we are going to try a CDR of music that uh, from GarageBand that I made and some of the demo stuff that came with GarageBand. So let's see if it'll read a CDR. Hey, it does. All right, let's give this thing a try. There you go. 
the CD player in this is stellar. It has a very good DAC in it, uh, so it reproduces sound extremely well. Uh, even on stuff like this that I that I made and that the the devs of GarageBand made, you know, like 15 years ago, it still sounds ph phenomenal. Now, as I've mentioned before, this also has an aux feature, so it has the RCAs on the back that you saw before. And that lets you plug in anything you want. A record player that has a built-in preamp, a preamp from a record player that doesn't, an iPod, a phone, or if you want to modernize a stereo like this, a Bluetooth adapter so you can just pair your phone with it and play Spotify right through the stereo. When a stereo this old has an aux input, it really makes it a lot more versatile. That's one thing the Sylvania didn't have. Um, it was kind of limited to what you had there, but this stereo is a lot more flexible, I would say, because you can cover all your sources pretty much uh, in one box, apart from having a built-in record player, but that's not a problem. I hooked up my ATLP60 here, and I will demonstrate uh, playing a record through this thing. It actually sounds very good. I think the records actually sound the best on this stereo. At least they compete the best with the CD portion, so let's demonstrate that. Our selection will be some more Slug Bug off of his Bad Food album. I think the song is called um, The Words That Come Out of My Mouth. record player sounds phenomenal on this thing, but like I said, you don't have to use a record player with an aux input. You can use pretty much anything you want. A computer, a Bluetooth adapter, uh, a phone, an iPod, you know, whatever. And uh, it's going to sound really good on this particular stereo. So I would say that this stereo was one of my better finds. It cost a little much. It was like 20 bucks, I think, I paid for this. But... Um, even then, I still think it's worth it. It sounded, pr it sounds pretty good. Now, the one thing left to test is how the tape deck records after I adjusted the azimuth. So, like we did with the Sylvania, I'll do that last with uh, various sources: the radio, and dubbing from another tape, the CD player, and uh, the record player. Since I happen to have that hooked up, so let's get on with it, shall we? One thing I neglected to mention is that the tape deck does have review and cue as well. That's going to make it a lot easier to find songs. about the placebo effect is just sort of this magical or mysterious response to a sham pill or fake procedure. But if you think about it, what's actually going on there is a physical change in response to the pure belief that you are going to heal or feel less pain or feel less anxiety or uh, have better sleep. To make a choice on uh, a variety of different uh, aspects. But practice, put your brain through the reps, and then come up with what you think is the right choice to make, 
And over time, if you make enough good choices, not all of them are going to be perfect. A lot of them are going to be bad. I, I once lost $50,000 buck trying to sell pants uh, in the colors of SEC football schools. I thought this is going to be a gold mine. I got into the pants selling business. It was a disaster. You lost your pants. Lost my pants, literally. But There you go. This thing records excellent. I should also mention that that entire recording was done on this really cheap on brand uh O N N brand Walmart type 1 tape. Really crappy tape and it still sounded that good. It records so much better than the Sylvania does. I think the Sylvania needs some more work. Probably needs the azimuth adjusted too. Probably needs belts the whole 9 yards, but uh this one's in really good shape. Everything sounds good on this. Literally everything. I would gather to say that this is a superior stereo in just about every way, except that it doesn't have a built-in record player. But that's easy enough to rectify, so not a problem. Well, there you have it. This is the, this is the Panasonic SAD-102 Compact Audio System. Very, very cheap and cheerful stereo. It, it sounds a lot better than it really ought to, even more so than the Sylvania does. I'd say that it doesn't have as much character as the Sylvania, but it is a better stereo. It sounds better, it tunes better, the tape decks are in better shape. Uh, you can select tape types, uh, you get cue and review and everything like that, and you get a built-in CD player that has that's programmable and has repeat. So it, it's kind of just a better stereo in every way, and it's really not that much newer. It's like 93 versus maybe 86 or so. So just in that short amount of time, um, cheap stereos seem to improve a lot. And part of that is the fact that this is a Panasonic unit. Panasonic stereos and Panasonic electronics in general tend to just age really well. Really good stuff. So that in general makes this a very fine stereo. So there you have it. That is the Panasonic stereo. Very pleased with it. I'm definitely going to continue to use this. I've moved the Sylvania stereo into my bedroom to use in there since it has a built-in record player. So it'll be nice to listen to records in there when I'm doing electronics work or whatever. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. The links to my social media are down in the description along with a link to our Discord chat. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.